Hey, this is Ralph, and I am still working on this Excel project where we are looking at a retirement account system, retirement planning system, really, using this buckets method. Now, I really like doing this kind of stuff because one, it gets me using Excel, which I'm really fond of, and it also gets me doing some personal finances, which is a topic I'm really fond of, and it's stuff that we can all do that hopefully impacts our lives. And hopefully this is realistic enough that we can use this as a true planning tool. Now I want mine to be a little bit more realistic. So this is where we left off and hopefully you're building this spreadsheet along with me. If you don't have yours yet, then definitely go back through the uh, previous videos, build this spreadsheet so that it works for you. Now something that, the, that would make this more realistic for me, social security income, pension income, which I'll have access to both, but I'm not gonna have access to these until I'm 67 and 65. And I would really like to see how my plan looks if I retire early at say 55, 56, or 57. Currently I'm, I'm, I'm in my late 40s. Okay, so that means I need to provide a little bit more information to Excel. And I'm also gonna need to edit these draws because obviously if I'm not old enough to get social security or pension, then that means I'm gonna to need to draw more from my account to cover my cost of living than I will in later years. So let's go ahead and clean some things up a bit. Oh, you know what? I think this is good too. Whenever you get to a point on your worksheets when you're really satisfied, don't go editing it too much. Instead, make a copy. So I think I'm gonna right click on my bucket sheet and I'm going to move or copy, create a copy, and I'll stick it there. Yeah, I guess I'll drag it over one. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this one. This is still buckets. And I need to keep track of my age. So I think what I'll do is instead of using these variable returns, which I really like, um, and I think it's a good realistic thing to do, I might add those back later on. I think what I'll do is I'll edit my grow three accounts so that it relies on my fixed return. So instead of relying on F4, I'm gonna go down to C14, make that absolute. And now I'm gonna have that consistent 11% return instead of that variable return. And like I said, I think it is good to have these variable returns in there. It gives you a more realistic look. It's nice having some negatives in there. I'll probably come back and add that later on. I just wanna make my worksheet look as simple as possible. And I'm gonna change this one out. Instead of return, I'm gonna keep track of my age here. So let's see, the year before retirement, I'm gonna say I am 55. Now I need these to be numbers here, so let me just go ahead and edit all of these. Let's, I guess we'll change this out to just a number format. There we go, with no decimals. Okay, let's try this again. My age before retirement, I'll say is 55, and then my next age is gonna be the previous age plus, I'll just do E4 which is that number there, that'll give me 56, and run all this thing out. Gotta make this absolute. F3 will be absolute, there we go. Either way, we just wanna get all those years in there. So it looks like my retirement plan is going until I'm age 90. All right, I feel okay about that based on, that's probably a little optimistic, hopefully it's not a ton optimistic. Okay, so now that we've got that, all right, feeling pretty good about this. I don't need those returns in there. Now, what I need to do off to the side for my social security income, I actually did a little bit of looking ahead, and I think my social security income might be around 30 grand a year, but that's not gonna be until I'm 67. And then my pension income actually might be closer to, well, it, it varies. It can be 33,000 a year if I wait until 65 and a little bit less if I go sooner. Now I want these to also just be numbers. Okay, so don't worry about those draws at the, at the moment, but basically my draw is gonna really vary quite a bit depending on my current age and the age when these mounts start to start. Uh, so it's gonna be a pretty tricky looking if function. Actually, we're gonna use an ifs function, but uh, bear with me on this and let's make sure I'm zoomed in nice and big. And here's how we're gonna write it. Okay, I'm gonna take out what I have, and I'm gonna use ifs. Ifs is better than if. Ifs allows us to do multiple logical tests and multiple results if true. So ifs, the first thing I wanna check for is I'm gonna do an and. Now with an and function, I'm gonna have two, two arguments in here. If my current age is greater than or equal to my social security age, 
comma, and if my current age is greater than or equal to my pension income age, comma. Now I'm on the value of true for this if statement. If, if that's true, if I'm older than Social Security age, older than pension age, well then, it's, uh, the, the draw amount is going to be my annual cost of living minus Social Security income minus pension income minus other income. Now really, a lot of these will be need to be absolute, but I'm going to come back and do those at the very end just to make it kind of cleaner looking. Okay, comma. Now I get to my next logical test. Now for my next logical test, I want to know basically is my current age greater than or equal to Social Security age only. Now if that's true, well then I'm going to put in my annual cost of living minus my Social Security um, income minus other income. I'm skipping the pension. Comma. Next logical test. If my current age is greater than or equal to the pension income age, comma. Well, if that's true, it's going to be my annual cost of living minus the pension income only minus other income, comma. And then the last one is going to be kind of the catch-all. And basically, that's going to be another and because and if my current age is less than my Social Security income age, comma, and my current age is less than the pension income age, comma, actually not a comma there, closing parentheses, then the comma, now for my last value of true, is basically going to be just budget income minus other income, and then closing parentheses for the ifs. And this kind of makes sense. For this year, I need to draw 55,000, which is simply the annual cost of living minus my other income of five grand. But if I were to change these ages requirements to like say five and five, notice then it's 60,000 minus 30 minus 33 minus five. If just one of these was below five, then I get the appropriate draw amount. And if the other one was below five. I get the, uh, the correct draw amount. Now, my video is getting a little bit long here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up in a follow-up video, but I definitely need to make pretty much all of these references, not all of them, but close to all of them, absolute references so that I can fill it down. And then we want to kind of look at, see how our calculator is going to look then. Thanks for hanging out with me.